Hey guys, welcome to Ibn David Zamalara. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about uh, the transmission lip mode, the transmission not shifting, your shifter not shifting. I would like to help you guys figure these things out uh, before you go to one of the shops and they're gonna promise you guys that they're gonna tell you everything what's wrong with it and they're not gonna tell you nothing more because they want you to save money and they don't want you to pay any more money, which is a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of, bunch of, I don't wanna say it because my channel is family friendly. So let's dive in guys. I had a question today um, on my YouTube channel and a lot of times it's really hard to figure out exactly kind of like what's going on. This is also another reason why I'm making this video because the only thing uh, that my viewer has said that why is his uh, sprinter not shifting? He said it's not shifting. So uh, to me, it's going to be one or two things. If he's parked and it's not shifting, the vehicle's on, you just, you're trying to leave a store, you're trying to leave your house. That is a different type of not shifting problem than the one I actually want to get into. Because this one has to do with the brake light switch, which it seems like a lot of you guys have been having this recently, including you, Mason. I am still very shocked, very surprised. Like, we're just talking about this thing. And you were asking me a question yesterday. You're saying, did you fix your brake light, uh, you know, switch or your problem, you know, with the brakes? And I haven't because I, I wasn't able to make it home. So obviously I cannot throw parts at it and just try to, you know, Turn hunt the problem down. So let's see, we're going to pause that right there. Um, so yeah, I haven't touched it. So it's really surprising that, that you're having this issue. So let me know, is that the brake light switch again for you or maybe it's something else? Because for me, I still don't know. So for me to find out, I need to first test uh, the brake light circuits, uh, test the uh, um, extra brake light switch. But anyways, that this is one of the problems, guys. If, if, I, if that thing fails, you cannot shift. But I'm pretty sure the question that I, that I had was, has, has uh, you know, was to do with actually you driving and you're basically, all you see is a D, but you're thinking, why can't I shift this manually by uh, tapping to the left, tapping to the right, which is normally, you could actually shift it like that. But why is it stuck on D? It's just not shifting anymore. You know, so I actually want to answer a few few questions of this that you might be having. And the first signs that you might be having an issue, guys, I want to go ahead and let you guys know because I actually had this before. Um, I wasn't sure what those signs meant before uh, because this was like a long time ago. And then obviously where it led to from there, okay? So it is not shifting from D. Um, typically, guys, it gets stuck in second gear and that's it. It's not going to shift uh, up for you. It's not going to shift down. So basically, that's limp mode. So the reason it gets stuck in, I guess, second gear, so probably you could drive it to uh, your local uh, dealership and have them take a look at it or a transmission shop. Um, but I do think if you are unlucky, it's going to get stuck in one. And uh, I believe that happened to me, guys. It was stuck in one. I could be mistaken because obviously the gear ratios are, you know, like I really don't understand them just yet. I mean, I, I understand it, but not to the point where I know which gear ratio. I haven't looked it up, like what speed it should be. But what I could tell you guys is once mine was in the limp mode uh, while I was driving, it was not shifting. Um, if I was driving 40 miles an hour, uh, I was reaching 4,000 RPMs, guys. So you try try to get in the highway that's like 65 miles an hour. If you, you got to get on the highway in order to get you know to a transmission shop, you're gonna be like the slowest guy on the road. You know, might as well like drive like I don't know like on a, on a curb. I couldn't even drive on the highway, guys. This happened to me on the highway right after traffic. I was in um, Tennessee. There was traffic. As soon as traffic uh, kind of like uh, you know was cleaned up and stuff, then I started like driving and it was completely like a limp mode like a few years back so at that time i did not know what's going on but here's uh first of all first signs you need to watch for this this might be happening to you so in case you don't watch this video to the end try noticing your sprinter like you're driving 
And then you might realize, you're thinking, wait a minute, I think I'm in a lower gear than I normally am. And you look at it and you're right. It's in fourth gear. You're thinking, hmm, did I somehow maybe uh, hit my shifter and now I'm in fourth gear? Maybe. So you probably shift it back and think nothing of it. Then it happens again. And you start realizing, okay, it's in fourth. But, uh, you know, it happens quite a bit. And then you start noticing it's like in fourth, but when you slow it down, it's like it's taking you to third. Like, you, you notice it's like, boom, from four, three, two, woo, woo, it's like one, you know. It's like shifting by itself, okay? Uh, and you might think, yeah, it's supposed to do that, but you're actually noticing this on your speedometer because normally if things are shifting normally, it's just going to be drive. It's going to do its own shifting thing, and you're not going to see where it's actually shifting to. So this is actually one of the signs to first watch for those guys that there is a problem. It's shifting by itself. So this should let you know, okay, red flag, what's wrong? What's going on now? Is this <clears throat> is this my solenoids acting up? Is this my, like, uh, well, my clutch is going bad? You know, who knows? So you're, you're, you're starting to think maybe it's like slipping or something. But what's actually happening, guys, this means your transmission fluid most likely hasn't been changed in a while. Or if it has been changed, now the entire time only some changing it partially, and sometimes maybe not even replacing a, a you know the transmission fuel the, the transmission oil filter uh, or the fluid filter. Uh, even if they're replacing it, it does not even matter. This is going to happen regardless. Just just because, even though somebody's replacing your transmission fluid, nobody is removing your valve body and. You have to remove the valve body in order to clean the speed sensor because the speed sensor is actually located on the conductor plate and the conductor plate sits, clamps into the valve body and in order to remove that piece you need to of course first remove the valve body then you got to remove all the solenoids uh, make sure you put them you know correctly on the table you know so you could put them right back and only then you could actually unclamp it but you don't have to remove the solenoids if you're trying to just clean the speed sensors I would just recommend just cleaning good like with brake cleaner and just wipe them down good to get rid of all the uh, metal uh, type of uh, particles and stuff because you don't want to have that stuff guys because uh, that's the stuff once it once it really gets on there and uh, like in a magnet it covers it up what's what's gonna happen is um, it's it's basically just just going to like the, the transmission cannot tell what speed you're in that's why it's called a speed sensor and um, it does not know what speed you're in. That, this is why it's like it's guessing, you know, and it's it's shifting all by its own, you know. So what I normally do in this situation, guys, when this starts happening, you know, I immediately say, okay, red flag. You know, I go home, whatever. Like uh, I try to make it home like right away because uh, chances are this could just completely stop and you're in limp mode and that's it. You know, you're stuck. So. I would just go home and uh, by the time I'm going home I already ordered myself like another conductor plate and I just go ahead and put a new conductor plate on there because the conductor plate is going to cost about 143 bucks to $147 uh, you know by the time you, you make it home it's you know you're probably going to already have it there uh, I order mine usually like on eBay or like uh, somewhere on Google I search for it you know I find it but if you live in North Carolina there's actually a, a place that's called uh, German Auto Supply. You can actually look them up. Sometimes they sell uh, fuel injectors and they sell various uh, different uh, like glow plugs, con uh, conductor plates. They sell them on uh, eBay. This is actually how I found out about them. Is uh, I was actually buying a, uh, a fuel injector from them, and uh, you know, one time I was, you know, like uh, buying a conductor plate. So I remember back when I was getting a fuel injector, I'm thinking, hmm, let's see if they have a conductor plate. It turns out it's a local type of uh, place. They actually do free delivery if you if you live there you know so anyways now that we have this out of the way you kind of know like you know why what this portion is okay there's another there's another thing to it okay <clears throat> sometimes the limp mode happens because uh, underneath your seat guys where you're sitting there's a black little box okay it is actually screwed with like with four like little tiny bolts to your seat towards the bottom it's very difficult to get to it guys uh, you can get to it like like through like little spaces and try to you know get the bolts loose uh, you can do that but most likely you're gonna need to remove the seat uh, what happens guys is the connector 
that plugs into the transmission control module. That's actually what it's called, transmission control module. It's a short uh, acronym is TCM, transmission control module, basically. Just so you guys know, uh, in case somebody's saying, uh, you know, TCM, TCM, you know, transmission control module, that's what they mean. Um, so what happens is, guys, uh, the 13 pin connector, which is uh, which is that little round plasticky looking thing uh, with the electronic uh, connector that connects, it's got thir 13 pins and it basically connects to the side of your transmission, guys. There is a seal and that seal goes bad. And once it goes bad, it, it, there's so much pressure inside of that transmission, guys, that it actually pushes the fluid right through the seal up the cable wires and stuff and i know this sounds crazy guys but this is so true it goes right through the wiring guys through the wiring harness and it just makes it to your transmission control module even though it's located under your seat that whole path and uh it basically makes all the all the connectors uh wet uh with fluid and that ends up uh, ultimately causing a lip bolt i mean it could short out the computer uh, but it causes a limbo guys and it's just stop shifting so when it's stopped shifting look at that piece first then start looking at everything else but here's one thing I do recommend guys if you are going to change your transmission fluid please please guys if you can clean the speed sensor that's like the one thing um, you know by doing all the things I described uh, second Make sure you guys change your change a 13 pin connector. Make sure you change the seal. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like the seal actually makes a lot of sense to replace, but I always replace it anyways, guys. It's a cheap little seal. I mean, you know, it's worth it's worth the extra money, guys, because you don't want to really go back and try to do the job all over again because now your transmission fluid is leaking all on the floor. Uh, so it doesn't worth skimping on these parts. So you do need a 13 pin connector, you do need a seal, you do need a new filter. Um, replace those guys, wipe down your speed sensor. Make sure not only that you drain your transmission fluid from your uh, or transmission oil pan, uh, but do drain it from torque converter guys. And the way you need to actually drain the torque converter is it's not easy. It's not easy, you might need a buddy to help you guys, but be careful. If you're gonna have somebody t twisting the crankshaft on your engine, guys, don't have your hands on there, guys, because you put your fingers in there, somebody twisting it, they could chop them right off, guys. So be careful. What I actually do, guys, I do it myself. I don't ask for no help. I get on one of those, like a little rolly thing for the mechanics, and I'm like right towards the front of the engine, guys. I like, typically, I have like my, uh, you know, I've raised up just a little bit my, my vehicle, just a little bit. It's still plenty of space in there, guys. And I try to lightly feel it with my fingers while with one arm, and it's and it's a very heavy twist, guys. It's, you know, it's, I mean, it's a crankshaft. You're cranking over the whole engine, so it's real hard to twist it with one hand. But just try to do it very slowly and try to feel for that little bump. It's kind of like on the side of the torque converter. If this is a torque converter, it's going to be like on the side. It's like a little bolt that requires the Allen wrench for you to pull it out. Now, once you twist it over, guys, and you find that bolt, make sure, do not do not drop the bolt in there, guys. Please don't, it's gonna take you like a while to fish it out, guys. I was replacing this thing one time with a mechanic that was actually showing me how to do it, and he was drunk at the time, and uh, I told him I was gonna remove it, but I was like, no, let, let, me, let me do it, let me do it. <laughs> I actually not remove it, install it back. So he, he wanted, he decided to install it back. He dropped it in there, guys. We were fishing for like for about an hour for the bolt, and you don't want to have that bolt in there, uh, guys. Just like look loose in there. I mean, not only that, it, it could be like a hazard, you know. It, somehow or another, that bolt's gonna be like a cause of a, a major catastrophic uh, torque converter failure. You know, you just never know. Even if you get in, like like another bolt, so please be careful. When you remove with the Allen wrench, just maybe have something magnetic to where, you know, you're just gonna be able to pull it out because that bolt is magnetic, guys, which is a good thing. We actually use the magnetic type of thing to fish it out, guys. Good thing he had one of those. Uh, but I, I guess uh, this uh, is almost all, but not all of it, uh, because you might be wondering, well, how much fluid do I need for the transmission fluid? 
Uh, typically, guys, you need about nine quarts of transmission fluid. If you drain your torque converter and you drain your uh, transmission oil pan, you know, like by removing it and completely draining it, and uh, for it to be nine quarts, then your valve body had to lose some oil as well. You can go ahead and put like uh, nine quarts of oil in there, but I would recommend putting like eight and a half uh, and, uh, you know, get like a measuring device to where you can actually measure the transmission fluid. You could get them online. Uh, these transmission uh, dipsticks do not come with one. You'll actually need to buy one. Uh, you know, you're gonna find one online, probably like 17 bucks. Um, it's definitely a good investment to try to pick up one of those things because then you can monitor your transmission fluid. I have one with me, guys. So if you ever see me, don't hesitate to ask. We'll measure, we'll measure your transmission fluid if I'm like in a parking lot or something. You'll see me at a truck stop with my uh, ugly uh, silver sprinter. <laughs> I know some of you guys told me it looks good, but I don't know. It's like I always, uh, you know, I know it's old. Uh, it's got over a million miles. It's it's been twice salvaged. Yeah, it's far from pretty. You know, it's I'm not even like giving it that much attention to the body. All I want to do is just have it looking good, clean. Um, so when I go to the customers for pickup and everything, you know, they think it's it's as new as any other Sprinter, you know. And it drives really well, guys. It, I mean, I'm really, like, I'm fortunate, like, how well it, like, handles good. Like, it just feels, feels pretty good. But anyways, guys, I guess I explained pretty much uh, everything. Uh, you know including the portion where if it's not shifting it's a brake light switch so you kind of get an all-in-one uh, type of video on this and it's not that long which I uh, congratulate myself under one hour good good job for me um, but anyways guys thank you so much for watching I hope you don't have any breakdowns uh, and if you do let me know in the comments below chances are I'll, I'll answer that same day uh, if I if I dealt with that issue of course I'm gonna let you know and uh, that's my whole goal. I do want to respond to every single comment. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Jo join the Sprinter community. Uh, after all, this is what I'm trying to create here. It's a Sprinter community uh, starting with me, with my videos, and uh, finishing with you guys, uh, which a lot of you have really contributed uh, to the comment section with all these uh, ideas and stuff about you know certain type of uh, breakdowns and I am really glad to see you guys communicate with each other in the comment section because that's kind of like what I was hoping to achieve one day if once I get a, you know like many people watching uh, to try to you know talk to each other help each other out uh, and uh, it's it's becoming a pretty rich type of source with information because the comment section is full of information guys you'll see some of my answers they're like this long guys and uh, believe me I, like, I'm not even using a voice uh, to write it I think only on several occasions I actually use my voice uh, with Siri to type it and you'll actually find out that I use my voice because it's gonna look a little weird because sometimes if she messes up and uh, it's all over the place but if you see common mistakes spelling mistakes yeah I only spell some stuff because uh, I don't want to blame it on English is my second language but after all it is uh, I still speak Russian every single day, so uh to my Russian viewers. Welcome to my channel. Добро пожаловать на мой канал. So, anyways, guys, take care. I appreciate you guys. Be safe out there, and uh, give me some ideas. Uh, what would you like me to answer? Because I do know a lot uh, that I haven't posted yet. So, I just wanted to make these little updates. Hopefully, they're going to be a little bit more insightful for you guys. Take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye-bye.